soup. Oh my god. Fuck. It's a little bit of a great white buffalo situation. Moby Dick, if you will. Just a quick warning, if I seem a little bit more weird in this video than usual, it's because I've been stuck on berries and cream TikTok for the past three days. Berries and cream, berries and cream, all oh, little ladder loves berries and cream. That's all. Oh yeah, Joshua Wiseman just came out with a cookbook and we are gonna be doing a full day of eating. Only Joshua Wiseman recipes. I have been a fan of Joshy Bear. Uh, <laughs> I don't know him at all. <laughs> Those parasocial relationships, am I right? I have been a fan for quite a while. I like his sense of humor. I love the exquisite B-roll and I like the fact that he zooms in on his wedgies while he's cooking and I think that's funny. However, even though I watch every single video he puts out, I have never made a recipe. So I figure that this would be a good way to pay homage and also actually try a recipe that he's made. <laughs> We're gonna start the day with some kanji. Let's get started. Okay, listen. So in the book, he goes into detail talking about how to like make things from scratch and how it's easy and how we should, you know, like stuff like chicken broth. However, I'm just gonna use the boxed kind because I don't have bones laying around. I'm not Jeffrey Dahmer. And also, there's this page. So I thoroughly read the recipe for the kanji, and it turns out that it takes about like one to one and a half hours to like come to fruition. So we're gonna go ahead and start the second recipe that we're gonna do today, which just so happens to be watermelon gazpacho. Not gonna lie, I picked this recipe solely because I like the word gazpacho, and I think it would be an excellent name for a pet, preferably a guinea pig, which I may or may not have been looking on the Humane Society website recently, and they have a plethora of guinea pigs that are like $5 a piece, and you have to buy them in pairs because guinea pigs don't like to be alone, they like to be little friends. I'm like low-key, high-key considering making a guinea pig sanctuary, but I haven't quite jumped off the deep in that far yet. I'm already like a cat lady. I don't know what type of person a guinea pig lady would be. Oh my god, one of them named Gazpacho, one of them named Basil. Like not Basil, but Basil. Cute! But regardless, let's get into this because this as well takes an hour to chill. <laughs> I should have read these. The next step in the gazpacho says, over an open flame or with a blowtorch, char the chili until it is blackened on every side. I don't have a gas stove or a blowtorch. I was contemplating just like sticking a lighter under this and, <laughs> and charring it that way, although I don't know if it's toxic to eat. So I'm just gonna throw these bad boys in the oven on broil and see what happens. Haha! <laughs> we do have a zester. Zesty, zesty. I'm sorry, I can't concentrate on not shaving off my phalange and talk at the same time. It's just not a skill that I have in my repertoire. <laughs> Those look blackened to me. We don't need no blowtorch over here. Maybe we do for fun reasons, but not for. Serrano peppers. All right, hear me out. I don't really know if this ice mold is octopuses or diglets, but we're gonna put some gazpacho in it and freeze some. Big brain. Fuck. Literally every surface in my kitchen is a complete disaster, so I am eating on the coffee table. But I am excited to try this because it looks 
really close to the picture except for I kind of let the kanji like sit a little while because I had to remake my egg because I messed up the egg. So it got a little bit more congealed than the picture was. But let's give this a go. Getting everything in the bite. Why is it so good? It's like a savory oatmeal almost. I think I'll reward myself because I did the dishes by having a wee cheeky spot of gazpacho. Well, they just turned out little nubbins, but whatever. Cheers. This tastes like something I've had before. I don't remember, but this is fantastic. First you get all the sweetness and then you're hit with a little bit of spiciness afterward, but it's not to the point where you're dying because the sweetness counteracts it. Perfect. Oh my God, why does this taste so familiar? What the hell? What is it? I just remembered the repressed memory that is gazpacho. When I was younger at the county fair, every single year they had a booth dedicated to Vitamixes. There was just these people whose sole purpose in life was slanging these blenders, trying to get you to buy a Vitamix that was like $400. It was either every 15 or 30 minutes they would have a cooking demonstration. And if you sat there through their little spiel, at the end you would get a Dixie cup with a sample. And I had sat through several demonstrations to try all of the things. And I'm pretty sure gazpacho was one of them. Okay, so we're gonna partake in a little bit of a late lunch considering that it's four o'clock. But regardless, I am super excited for this next recipe. We are gonna be making tomato soup. I need to tell you something that probably no one will care about, but I have been tracking down the perfect bowl of tomato soup since I was 10. It's a little bit of a great white buffalo situation, Moby Dick, if you will. Because when I was 10, I went on a family vacation to Las Vegas, which was not a kid-friendly environment. I don't know why we were there, because my dad had the gambling addiction. I don't know. But we ended up going to something called the Tournament of Kings in Excalibur. This was like a medieval-themed casino. At this show, they had jousting. You got served like a four-course meal. You got to eat with your hands. The starter dish to that was a bowl of soup that you just like slurped like an animal. And this was the single best best tomato soup that I have ever had in my entire life. And after that, Campbell's soup does just not cut it because you can really taste the can in Campbell's soup. But yeah, I have been hunting this down for years and nothing has come close. I've even gone back to Excalibur as an adult. The tomato soup was not the same. So no pressure. <laughs> Oh my god. That shell is intense. Yee, yee, star, yee, yee, star. Oh my god. how exquisite this color is right now. And this tastes freaking amazing. Let's make a little grilled cheese nugget to go along with our soup. I went ahead and picked up a sourdough baguette from the grocery store. Joshua Wiseman has an entire section devoted to breads and he encourages you to make your own. However, I've gone this entire pandemic without buying an air fryer or making a loaf of bread. I didn't miss out on the depression train, but I'm two for three, okay? So we are not about to start making bread. It was made fresh yesterday by someone, or the day before, I'm not really sure. I know that this is not the knife to be doing this with. I have one knife, so it's not a steak knife. This is it. This is a great white buffalo. All the emotions of a quest completed. An end of an era. I have no words. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to tap out for tonight and make the gnocchi tomorrow because it's already almost seven o'clock. <laughs> 
and I'm sweaty because I ate too much soup. This was amazing. I would buy the cookbook just for this recipe. If it only had one page in it and it was this recipe, I would buy it. Name your price. Oh my God, I'm so tired. Cooking is exhausting. Okay, new day. We're back at it again. We're wearing horizontal stripes with vertical stripes, so we're feeling chaotic and ready to make this pesto gnocchi. But before we get into that, <laughs> I just met one of you out in the wild. It was the first time I ever gotten recognized. So shout out to Paula. Hey girl. Thank you for making me feel a little bit like a celebrity when I was shipping my package. Even though I was like fighting with the printer like a caveman trying to figure out how to print things, even though like I do that for a living. And I also like took down my mask for a bit to like rip packing tape with my teeth like an animal so I could like so sorry you had to see me like that <laughs> in my absolute best but yeah aside from me being me Paula was wonderful it was a good experience overall and now I'm not afraid to like meet someone in the wild so yeah let's make some gnocchi Life hack, if you don't have a potato masher, you can put them in a gallon sized baggie and beat them with your fists. Like Donkey Kong. I took pottery in college and I never got good at it, but I just kept on taking it. Okay, well this is embarrassing, but I'm almost done eating it. And instead of turning the camera on, I took a picture of myself. <laughs> so as you can tell, I am a professional. What I was saying though was, this is amazing. Noki is like the ultimate comfort food. It's somewhere between a potato and a noodle. I think it's technically classified as a dumpling. Ultimate comfort food. So good, so satisfying, so comforting. The pesto is really good. Mine turned out kind of chunky. Uh, the picture in the book, his looks like a little bit more smooth and like a lot more green. I don't know how he achieved such a color, but I don't know, but this is amazing. And I had no idea that gnocchi was this easy to make. I typically shy away from anything with a dough because uh, <laughs> I make a god awful mess and for some reason I just really, really F it up every time. But this was so simple. Like why was I making gnocchi all these years? Actually it's pretty dangerous that I know this recipe now because I'm gonna want it all the time. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I had a fun time making it. It's always awesome when I'm able to pay an homage to a creator I watch all the time and broaden my culinary horizons. If you wanna check out Josh's channel or his cookbook, I will link those things down below for your convenience. But right now I'm gonna quit talking because I feel like I have a bunch of green stuff in my teeth. So I just, I'm hoping that you're having a wonderful day and I thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.